Welcome to my Unreal Engine 5 tutorial on creating dynamic cube maps. In this step-by-step -step guide, you'll learn how to build real-time reflective cube maps in UE5. We'll cover creating a dynamic cube render target, setting up a scene capture cube, and applying reflections to a material for stunning visual effects. This is perfect for beginners and advanced developers working on games with dynamic environments. Subscribe for my next video on building a portal system, and give a thumbs up to support the channel. Let's start by creating the project from scratch. Launch Unreal Engine and choose the third-person template. Name the project MyCubeMap. Once created, test that the template launches correctly. Open the content browser. Right-click, select Texture, then Cube Render Target, and name it My underscore Texture Render from Cube. This will be the saved texture for the cube map, a texture with six faces. Set size X to 1024 for a higher quality texture, and save. Now, let's create an actor to capture and feed the texture. Right-click, select Blueprint class, then Actor, and name it BP underscore Cube Capture. In Components, add a Scene Capture Component Cube. In Texture Target, select My Underscore Texture Render Prim Cube that we just created. Ensure Capture Every Frame is checked. Compile and Save. Next, we'll create a material to display the cube's texture. Right click, select Material, and name it My Underscore Cube Map Underscore Mat. Set Material Domain to Surface, Blend Mode to Opaque, and Shading Model to Unlit. Add an interior cube map node. Add a texture coordinate node and connect it to the UV's input. Add a constant node, set its value to 1, and connect it to tiling. Add a texture sample parameter cube node. Name it cube map and select my underscore texture render prim cube in prim. Connect everything to emissive color and save. Finally, we'll create an actor to display the cube map using the material we just created. Right click, select blueprint class, then actor, and name it bp underscore cube map. In the components tab, add a cube. In scale, set 0.05, 2.4, and 2.4. These values ensure the display is scaled correctly relative to the character. Assign my underscore cube map underscore mat to the cube's material. Compile and save. Now, let's do a first test. From the content browser, drag bp underscore cube capture into the level and position it. Drag BP underscore cube map into the level and position it elsewhere. And there you go, the captured view displays, creating a depth effect. You can see the character appear, and environment changes are reflected in real time. Be aware, this is resource intensive. Select the floor, go to the details tab, and change the material to, for example, m underscore ground underscore gravel from the starter content. This removes the grid lines on the floor for a better visual result. Note that since we're using a cube instead of a plane, the effect is rendered on all sides. Now, let's optimize performance. In the texture, set size X back to 512. In BP underscore cube capture, select the cube capture component and uncheck capture every frame. 
The capture won't update automatically once the game starts, so we'll update it manually at a lower refresh rate. Drag the capture component into the event graph and add a capture scene node. Connect it to event tick to capture the scene every tick. Now, limit the tick interval for this actor. Go to class defaults and set actor tick interval to 0.5 for a refresh rate of twice per second. Compile and save. When testing, you'll notice the character's movements are choppy, matching the twice per second refresh rate. This saves resources, which is crucial if you have multiple cube maps displayed at once. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe. In the next video, we'll create a full portal system with character teleportation. The final part of this video is aimed at advanced users. Let me know in the comments if this part felt too challenging or if it helped you discover something new. Now, let's see how to create cube render target textures directly in Blueprint instead of manually, as we just did. We'll use C++ to create a new Blueprint node that doesn't exist by default in Unreal Engine. Don't worry, and we'll go step by step as always. The only prerequisite is having a C++ toolset configured, as covering that would take too long in this video. From the third person map tab, go to the tools menu and click new C++ class. Scroll to Blueprint Function Library, select it, click Next, then Create Class. Click OK and Yes to automatically open your C++ code editor with the .h and .cpp files. I'm using Visual Studio. Make sure to close Unreal Engine to compile without issues. In the .h file, add the include line as shown on screen. Then, add the declaration for the create dynamic cube render target function. Visual Studio can automatically generate the function definition in the .cpp file. Replace the auto-generated return nulpture with these few lines. Here's a quick explanation of the code. New object creates a new cube render target object at runtime. Init custom format initializes the texture with the specified resolution and a format suitable for cube maps. With B is cube map set to true, it enables cube map mode. Rename assigns a name to the object for identification. Update resource prepares the texture for use. That's it for the C++ part, now compile. Back in Unreal Engine, let's remove references to the texture we created at the start. In BP underscore cube capture, select the scene capture component and clear texture target. The material won't compile without a texture, so keep that texture in the project. Add a new function in BP underscore cube capture called create cube render target. This function will dynamically create a texture for the cube map using our C++ code. Add the create dynamic cube render target node we just created in C++. Set size to 512 and format to pf underscore float RGBA, then connect the node. Promote the node's output to a variable named render target. Drag the scene capture component and add a set texture target node. Connect the links. Add a return node. Drag the render target variable while holding control and connect it to add a return parameter. Add a validity check for the render target variable at the function's input to avoid recreating the texture unnecessarily. If the variable is invalid, create it. If valid, return it.
compile and save. Now, let's handle BP underscore cube map to trigger the function we just created when the game starts. In short, we'll dynamically create a texture for the cube map and assign it to the material. Add a get actor of class node for the BP underscore cube capture class to retrieve the BP underscore cube capture actor instance. Check the validity of the returned actor. Add a call to the create cube render target function from the returned actor. Add a create dynamic material instance node and select the existing my underscore cube map underscore map material. This node creates a dynamic instance of the material to modify its parameters. Promote the output to a variable named dynamic material. Add a set texture parameter value node to replace the cube map texture in the material with the dynamically created one. Connect as shown on screen. Set the parameter name, which is cube map in the material. Finally, assign the dynamic material to the cube component using a set material node. In the level, you'll see the effect take place once the level starts, even if it was launched before, because everything is dynamic. The benefit may not seem obvious compared to the non-C++ method, but this allows you to add as many actors as needed without manually creating new textures in the content browser. If you have two or three effects like this in your game, manual creation is manageable. Beyond that, this code becomes necessary. Please subscribe, as we'll explore a practical application of this in the next video. We'll create an advanced portal system with player teleportation. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. I hope you gained new knowledge. Feel free to leave a comment. Thank you for watching until the end, and see you soon for the portal system setup.